Ando, Weirdo 18, Weird History. Chapter 1. This morning, our class was talking about history. We were learning about people who lived a long, long ago, like the amazing ancient Egyptians. Mommy! And all about the Dark Ages. Why was it called the Dark Ages? Because there were so many nights. Plus, some life-changing inventions. What was the most groundbreaking invention in history? The shovel. I loved learning about history. Me too. History is a snake's favourite subject. History has made us who we are, said Miss Franklin. Even the smallest difference from many, many years ago could have completely changed the way we live today. Like what, Miss? asked Blake. Well, said our teacher, imagine if Thomas Edison never invented the light bulb. Then we'd be living in the dark ages. Everyone laughed. It, it would get dark around dinner time, said Bella. You'd have to be really careful what food you put on your plate. Yeah, said Henry. You wouldn't want to mistake a big grub for a sausage. I wanted a sausage on a roll, not a sausage that can roll. And what would we do without all the light bulb jokes, said Sue. How many kids does it take to change a light bulb? What's a light bulb? I have another one for you, said Miss Franklin. What if the dinosaurs never became extinct? 66 million years ago, imagine living with dinosaurs. Whoa, that would be bananas. First of all, we need a bigger classroom. What do you call a dinosaur that never gives up? A try try ceratops. I could fly home on a pterodactyl, said Henry. Woohoo! We could all slide from the from the window into the playground on a brontosaurus, said Wendy. This school is dynamite. All ride to school on a stegosaurus, I added. The sports carnival, carnival would be too rough. The sports carnival would be tough, said Toby. I, I wouldn't want to line up next to a T-Rex in the hurdles. I prefer playing squash. Imagine the lunchroom, said Wendy. Chomp. Must be a hungry saurus. What do you call a prehistoric pig? Asked Super Funny. Jurassic Pork. It, it was so much fun thinking about dinosaurs. But Miss Franklin had something else to tell us about. Something really exciting, she said. There was a writing competition coming up that she wanted us all to enter. This is, she said, I'd like your stories to have... Thing is, she said, I'd like your stories to have a lot of history in them. Our class will vote for the best one, which we will then enter in the original writing competition. The winning school gets a whopping 1000 to spend at Buster's bookshop. Oh, cool! My whole class was so excited. Everyone loved Buster's bookshop, including me. It was huge and had v every book you could ever dream of. Here are the short stories. And this is where you find, find the tall tales. The people who work there are amazing too. You can tell they really love love being loved being love being around books all day. 
Can you please show me where the mystery section is? Hmm, how about I give you a clue? Excuse me, do you have a horror section? Ah, I'll show you, it's just over here. And we all knew our library really needed a, a, needed new books. Some of the books in there, they were so old, they were written by the dinosaurs. This was a, a Jurassic Time bestseller, okay? Bella wanted more classic tales of awesome girls. I really wanted some more action-packed hero comics. Henry wanted more action and adventure and poetry. Sue wanted more books to make her laugh. We really wanted that prize. Our, uh, our librarian did too. Chapter 2. After school, Henry, Bella and Sue came over to my place to hang out for a while. We, over, we were bouncing a basketball around when Sue s spotted Dad's old costume box. Ooh, a costume box. What's this? she said as she lifted a, out a white a light feather bow and golden tunic suit sue, sue pulled the clothes on it and hung the bow around her neck i look like a gladiator chicken be gurg i'm the bravest and funniest chicken in town sue clucked and puffed her chest as she waddled around I'm one tough comedy hen. We all giggled. Sue was so funny. Henry dug through the costume next. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. He pulled on something, some, some goat ears and a goatee. A goatee, then he wrapped a, a white sheet around him like a toga. All bow to Emperor Barry the Goat. Now, to really finish my look, I've got to have a strong wooden staff. Henry snatched up our old garden rake and thumped the end of the pole on on the ground this will do raking leaves and catching thieves suddenly henry broke into a limerick now really i don't mean to gloat i swear by the hair on my throat i'm the fastest around i'll win all the crowns for i'm emperor barry the goat Bella dug into the box and pulled out a yellow duck bill, duck bill, bill a crown and a cape. Mm-hmm, she said. Then she put everything, everything on and spun around to face us. You may call me Princess Daniel of Ducking Palace. I'm a real fire quacker, said Bella, always fighting for my people. Ha, 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 ha. Oh the, ca oh, the cape has a little tear in it, said Bella, peering at the, the ripped fabric. Nothing a bit of duct tape can fix. I guess it was my turn, I said. I dug through the box to see what was left. No, n no, not that. Hmm, maybe. Aha! Uh -huh. Finally, I found something. This will work. I'm Sir Oinkalot. I'm always here to help those in need. I started spinning and kicking around the room while swinging my broom like a star. Pow, pow, pork chop! The four of us were having so much fun muck, mucking around and playing our animal playing our animal characters. Who knew Dad's old costume box could be so so hilarious?
Well, I did. Suddenly, there was a bright flash. It was Roger with Dad's phone. As soon as he'd snapped the pic, Roger ran away again. Whoosh, bye-bye. We all looked at the time and realised it was getting super late. It, it was almost seven o'clock. It's almost seven, o, seven o'clock, said Sue as she took off her feather bow and tunic. Yeah, I have to duck home for dinner, said Bella, removing her crown and make and make a start start and make a start on my his, my story. I've got to be g- going myself, said Henry. He tossed his goat ears and told Toga book in the costume box. That was lots of fun. See you at school next week. Chapter 3 I sat down for dinner and realised I still had my pig night costume on. Roger was smiling at me, so I got up, grabbed the kitchen broom and started kicking around again to make him laugh. Pow, pow, chop! He thought I was hilarious. Mum, Dad, Grandad and Sally were... were when Nate were keen to hear about the writing competition and the Buster's book prize. So, so, so it's a story that needs a little history, said Mum, thinking hard. Hmm, if you need a history joke, let me know, said Dad. I've got loads. What do you call a caveman with the wind? A blast from the past. Ha, 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 ha. We all laughed. Dad was hilarious. But this wasn't helping. I still didn't know what to write about. Do you have any ideas yet? Asked Sally. I shrugged. I didn't know where to begin. There were so many awesome, awesome moments in the past. How could I choose just one? I know. What if you wrote about the moon landing? That was a pretty amazing time in history. This story is so good, it's impossible to put down. What about the invention of the steam engine, said Sally. Trains would be a great top topic to choo-choo-choose. All aboard. Hmm. Granddad had an idea next. He suggested I write about the time television was invented. Best time of my life, he said dreamily. I want to watch a dog um, immunitary. Or what about when mobile phones were invented, said Dad. I used to own own the smallest smallest one you could buy. Phones have come, come a long way, said Dad as he grabbed his phone from Roger. He looked down at the screen. Hey, this is a cool photo. Dad held out his phone for us to see. That was pig night. That was pig night was pretty good. Which had made me think maybe he could star in my story somehow. What if I write about the feel... uh, this fearless pig, I said, slowly working it out. He loved to s- save the day. Then I came up with the best part. And what if he had, he had, uh, and what if he had a time machine, I said, and could travel all through history. That way he could go to whatever time he wanted to. That's it. 
Everyone loved my idea. I jumped up and grabbed the broom again. Only if it's covered in... Can you, pl can you please sweep the floor while you're at it? Only if it's covered in bad guys, I answered. So, what's the pig's name? asked Grandad. As I was thinking about saw oink, oink a lot, Roger jumped up and called out, Pow, pow, pig! Pow, pow, pig! I love it! Chap chapter 4. We were all so excited to to be back at school, ready to share the stories read and written. It was awesome to find out from Henry, Bella and Sue that we had all written stories about the characters we'd made up in my garage. We'd all written about the characters who were animals from different times in history. Ha! <laughs> Bella was up first to read to our class. My, my story's about a princess duck called Daniel Duck. Good day. Princess Daniel Duck was a legendary royal from hundreds of years ago. This princess didn't think it was right that she seemed so many servant, servants to cook and clean and preen her. That's awkward. It was totally unnecessary. She decided the castle needed a real shake-up. Why don't you take the morning off? I can make myself some toast. She, she declared that everyone needed to pinch in the chores and include the whole royal family. Yes, even you, the royal throne, your highness, ill. That meant more time for everyone to share in things they loved. Lucky duck, wow! Bella's story was great. I high-fived her as she walked back to her desk. Henry's story was about Emperor Barry the Goat. He was a famous chariot eight racer. That wasn't a race he couldn't win. There wasn't a race he couldn't win. Winner, winner, grass for dinner. Whoosh. But when he was winning the biggest race ever in all of history, he gave it all up when he spotted a baboon in the crowd, stealing someone's pouch of gold. If Barry spun his chariot around with a great skid and sped back to the battle, the other racers had no idea what was going on. Barry, 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 you turn. He leaped into the crowd and climbed, climbed it like a mountain goat because he, because he was a mountain goat and caught the crook red-handed. It meant more to him that all his chariot at racing was combined and from on he decided to chase crooks and not trophies. Henry's story was awesome. We all cheered. Sue wrote a story about a powerful gladiator chicken from the Roman Empire. Chelsea Chicken was a famous gladiator, a gladiator who couldn't be beaten. Who, who are you calling chicken? Chelsea, Chelsea. Chelsea was so tough, she came from a hard-boiled egg, said Sue, and in her spare time outside of the gladi 
Gladiator Arena. Chelsea was always on the lookout for people in need. Once, in between battles, she spotted a family of rabbits in trouble. Hop along, it's our burrow now. If there was one thing Chelsea couldn't stand, it was a bully and here, they, here there were three. Don't make me use foul language, she cried. She lifted up her shield and started spinning it as fast as a tornado. Oh no, it's Chelsea. It's, oh no, it's Chelsea. Then she flung it like a frisbee night at the foxes. Pop, pop, pop. They'll never bother you again, she told the bunnies. She outfoxed the foxes and saved the bunnies. Chelsea, our chicken, you're our hero, cried the thankful group. Sue took a bet, big bow at the end of her story. I learned about Chelsea, a chicken, in the hen cyclopeda. It was having, I was having so much fun, I couldn't wait to hear more. Chapter 5. Handsome story was about Cave Boy, the world's first supermodel. Life for Cave Boy, boy amazingly good looking, was not easy, said Hans. First of all, mirrors hadn't been invented yet, so he had to admire his hair while staring into puddles. Oh, and the f oh, and the fashion was so boring. That's that's so ten thousand years ago. But he did his best to work the runway with what he had. Wow, so modern, so chic. He, who is he? Who is he wearing? I think it's Wally the Woolly Mammoth. And he even made it to the cover of Teen Caveman a ma magazine, every good-looking cave boy's dream. The cave people went wild when they spotted him. They'd never seen anyone so amazingly good-looking before. Cave boy, you're on fire. Wait, that hasn't been invented yet. And the rest, said Hans with a bow, is ancient history. I was loving these stories. Everyone had done such a great job of putting a lot of history into their work. Miss Franklin was having a blast too. Keep on coming. The entire class had awesome tales to tell, like Jenny, who wrote an incredible story about her best friend, a woolly mammoth unicorn. And Toby, who wrote about an ancient wishing well that he nearly fell into. I wish I wasn't falling into this wishing well. And Wendy wrote a super cool story. The penguin that saved the Titanic. Freeze! Lucky last, it was my turn. I couldn't wait for everyone to meet Pow Pow Pig. Once upon a time, there was a pig who was destined for greatness. You see... This barnyard animal wasn't always known as Pow Pow Pig, the time-travelling hero. He was once an ordinary janitor spending day after day sweeping up everybody else's mess. But one day before... But one day before his only friend at school, Professor Bunsman, suddenly moved far, far away. She, she took him to her top-secret lab to see.
the machine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Everyone in the class squealed with excitement. The pig was so tired of cleaning up schoolyard trash. He wanted to clean up real trash. Villains through the ages. He grabbed nothing but his trusty broom and jumped in the time machine. He punched a few numbers on the control and bam, he was gone. I told the class all about how he travelled through the past fighting crime with nothing but his old broom, some kindness and a whole lot of courage. Eat my dust, pal! Pig on someone your own size. Pow, pow! He was history's greatest hero. And that was how he earned the name Pow Pow Pig. My whole class stood up and cheered. Chapter 6 Class, class, said Miss Franklin. That was simply sensational. You, you are all such brilliant writers. Any one of those stories could win the original competition. Amazing! I am so darn proud of you. I'm pretty sure we're all proud. We're all feeling quite proud of ourselves. But now we had to pick a winner for the original competition. Miss Franklin handed around note, note cards to take our votes. It was so hard to choose my favourite. Hmm, what to do? Yep. We folded our votes and popped them in a box. Done. Miss Franklin counted them while we waited, then sat back on her chair, scratching her chin. Who was it? Who was it? Who was the winner? Well, said Miss Franklin, it seems we have a four-way tie. Our top voted writers are Bella, Henry, Sue and Weir. Congratulations! We did it! The awesome foursome! I knew you were going to win. I knew you were going to win. I knew we were going to win. But, said Miss Franklin, we can only enter one story. So, what do we do, Miss Henry asks. I suddenly felt another a great idea coming. Along. Uh-huh, that could work. I was thinking about my friends' awesome writing and their heroes. What if we combined our stories? I said to my class. Pow Pow Pig could travel through time with Daniel Duck, Chelsea our Chicken and Barry the Goat. And they could all do good together. Everyone loved the idea of combining our stories. Miss Franklin thought it was the best solution for our four-way tie. Because what's better than one hero? Four heroes! We worked super hard that afternoon to figure out, out, out well while Henry typed it up. And finally, it was perfect, ready to go off to the original finals. Pow Pow Pig and Friends by Weirdo, Super Funny, Bella Allen and Henry O. Henry. Chapter 7. Miss Franklin sent our entire our entry, our 
the tree and all we could do was wait with our fingers, toes and trotters crossed. We had to wait a whole week for, new, for, for news of the riding competition winner. It was being announced at, out the front of Buster's bookshop. Buster himself was going to pick the winner, winning story. Kids from a whole bunch of schools were there hoping they'd win the voucher. Just like us. Ooh, I hope he says it's us. Buster stepped out to walk to the crowd. Welcome future authors. You have written some of the most incredible stories I've ever read, said Buster. I was blown away by the entries. I am sure many of you will have books on my shelves in the years to come. Gee, I really hope that was true. It would be so cool to be an author. Buster sighed. I'm afraid I can only choose one winner. My friends and I looked at each other, hopefully, and that winner is Holly Winter for her wonderful story, Elephant and Mouse. Best friends forever. Oh, it wasn't us. I clapped for Holly, but was pretty disappointed we didn't win. It looked like my, f my friends felt exactly the same. Winning isn't everything, but it sure feels good. The crowd was quiet as Buster spoke again. But wait, he said, there was another story I really loved. So I've created a second prize for the competition. Uh, a wave of excitement washed over the crowd, but I didn't want to get my hopes up. And second place goes to Weirdo, Bella Allen, Henry O. Henry, and Super Funny for Pow Pow Pig and Friends. It was us! Pow Pow! Miss Franklin and our families cheered so loudly for us. The four of us hugged, then bowed up to Buster to bolted up to Buster to find out what we'd won. Congratulations, kids. Here's your prize. A printer? A printer! Chapter 8. We were so happy with our prize and even prouder of our story. Miss Franklin was thrilled to, with the new with the new printer for our classroom. Isn't it beautiful? And that's when I had the greatest idea of all. Ding! Thanks, Thomas Edison. We could print loads of copies of our books to sell. Once we'd printed a whole heap, Henry, Bella, Sue and I each took a stack of copies to every bookshop around. Now this is what I call thinking outside the box. Here's the best bit. Everyone loved it. Copies were flying off the shelves. Duck! And we've made lots of money to buy a whole bunch of new books for our school library. Our librarian was so excited, she nearly fainted. Wow, I lo like, I, like you say, you gotta, you gotta believe in your shelf. I was so tired, I couldn't wait to get home and fall in a heap, heap on the couch.
When I got there, I found Roger sitting on the floor looking through our book and giggling. He saw me and smiled. Pow, pow! He really loved that pig. He might have been Pow Pow's biggest fan. I, th I, th I, th I thought about Dad's costume box. I guess there was one more thing I could do. Craft time, Pow Pow Pig and Pow Pow Piglet. Thanks for watching this video guys and and there's more coming soon so see ya